Sometimes children are born with abnormalities or conditions that affect their urinary systems. Dr. Tony Curry of Children's Hospital of Orange County describes the types of defects and what interventions are available to treat this condition. When you say urology, everybody's thinking older men or older women with incontinence and, and that kind of stuff. You'll be surprised that most of the, the conditions that we deal with or many of the conditions we deal with are actually discovered in utero, in fetal life. Uh, so when moms are pregnant, an ultrasound is done and that ultrasound either picks some uh, enlargement of the kidney or abnormalities of the bladder or the ureters, which are the tubes that take urine from the kidneys down to the bladder. Dr. Curry described the treatment options. The technology has really advanced with, uh, with ultrasound. It, it's to the point now that not only we diagnose problems, we can sometimes even treat problems. We can um, intervene through the mother's abdominal wall, the wall of the uterus, baby's abdominal wall, and get ourselves straight into the baby's bladder. We asked Dr. Curry about the range of problems. There's an important condition called reflux, where the ureter, which is a, the pipe that drains the urine from the kidney to the bladder, has a one-way valve at the lower end. It allows urine from the kidney to go down to the bladder, but stops that urine from refluxing back up into the kidney again. On occasion, that valve is developmentally weak and allows urine from the bladder to reflux back, shoot back up into the kidney again. Normally, that's not a problem unless a child has a bladder infection because now we're allowing bacteria from the bladder to shoot back into the kidney and the kidney has very, very weak defenses against bacteria and it causes an infection with fever and can eat away a part of the kidney and result in scarring and damage to the kidneys. And so what we do is we put them on a period of preventative antibiotics and then we retrain their bladder. We, uh, we teach them how to look after their bladder and how to prevent infections. If they continue to have recurrent infections with the reflux, our then job is to protect the kidneys. And the way we fix that reflux nowadays is we fix it by um, what we call endoscopic correction. And that succeeds in about 85% of the time. The, in the past, we used to do this with open surgery, and it was a two, two and a half hour surgical procedure on the bladder and the ureter, and the child would need to remain in the hospital for two to three days with catheters, etc. Now, we don't even need to do that. We can do the injection. It's a 10, 15 minute outpatient procedure, and the girl can go back to her soccer practice that same night. Dr. Curry examines another potentially serious condition. The one other condition that I'd really like to mention because it's important for parents to be aware of is torsion of the testis in boys. On occasion, some of the, sometimes the testis spins around, and it, when it spins around, it twists around, it twists its artery and vein and cuts off the blood supply to the testis. That condition is called torsion of the testis, and it causes intense pain. The boys are frequently very shy to mention that to their peers, to their parents, or to their teachers. It happens at school or at home. And so they just sit quietly hoping the pain would go away. The pain doesn't go away when there is a real torsion. And what happens is within four to six hours, the testis dies. The sad thing about it is it's preventable. It's a very simple surgical procedure to open the scrotum, untwist the testis, and fix it with three sutures to the scrotal wall so it can never twist again. And I would encourage every parent to have this little tiny chat with their, uh, with their uh, male child to remind them that any time they have scrotal pain, we only get four hours to save that testis. But any time there's acute scrotal swelling, the sudden onset of scrotal swelling, torsions and obstructed hernias are important emergencies that parents should not procrastinate, delay, just show up in the emergency room. You don't need to go to your primary care physician. It just takes longer, and we only get four hours to deal with it.